Fiona. One of the very great successes of WBA right through the generations has been targeting its allies. And it started mm -hmm. way back with Rachel and uh, Brian Shaw and Ron Merkel and people like that, right through to Neil Young and, and today with Michael Shand and Robin Brett and people like that. We've been very good at finding men in power who will support us. And they stand in the space of, um, I, I support the WBA and what they do, and their voice carries a weight that our voices, sometimes shrill and sometimes piping, sometimes nagging, we can't carry that. And yet when you have these allies who are men, they bring a lot of men with them. Also during the first year when we were trying to establish our credibility, we arranged talks and they were talks given um, every couple of months and we would invite people, heads of jurisdictions like Chief Justice Black of the Federal Court, um, we had Mary Gordon giving a speech, we had um, Alistair Nicholson, Ju Chief Justice Alistair Nicholson and eminent people like that and we would invite everybody, the whole of the bar to these sessions and so that people would come along including the leaders of the bar like Ron Merkel, Ron Caston at that time who, and Peter Justice Gray and they would turn up and they would be very visible so that that was part of the process of telling people well we, we are an, uh, an association, we are credible and criticise us at your peril really. Mm -hmm. How did you find practising at the Melbourne Bar as one of the only two women at the bar? Well, I didn't think of myself as a woman at the bar. <laughs> this is something that's come with modern women. Uh, I just thought of myself as a barrister at the bar and I'm sure Joan Rosenhove never thought of herself as a woman at the bar. I think she just, she knew she was the best divorce practitioner in Melbourne. My experience was when you asked a number of senior women whether they'd experienced discrimination at the bar, inevitably they would say no. And I think the reasons for that were twofold. One is that they had not experienced discrimination because they had had the benefit of support and patronage. The other is that they were ashamed to say yes. Because it's a competitive industry and we are each competing with each other and being judged on our so-called merits, somebody to admit that they were missing out on work would necessarily reflect badly on them and their standing and their merit. So if you were to admit that you had no work, you were seen as a dud and you deserved to fail. So all of us had to at various times say, yes, we're doing all right, but I see other women who are not. And it's been a very difficult issue, and I don't think it's been resolved. It's highly competitive, and when a young woman starts as a member of the bar, she's got to wait a long time. She's got to be very, very patient before she gets a brief at all. And then she's got to be very successful with that particular brief to get the next brief. Far more successful than a man might have to Well, be. you said that. I didn't. Yes, I think perhaps she's got to be better than a man. But she can't start off with any great ideas of setting the world on fire straight away. She's got to be waiting for the briefs and for the breaks. 33 years after Joan Rosenhove gave that interview, at the WBA's instigation, the Victorian Bar Council commissioned a report in 1998. Researchers Dr Rosemary Hunter and Helen McKelvey found that women were still being given disproportionately fewer briefs, especially for cases involving trial work and in non-traditional practice areas such as commercial litigation. Women were also leaving the bar earlier and in larger numbers than men. In 1998, I think it was, the bar actually supported the um, report, the Hunter report, that was the first report of its kind in Australia that actually looked at well, was it all just a lot of scuttlebutt or were women being briefed in the right proportion for how many were there and what were the things endemic in the system that were stopping it, if that turned out to be the case and it turned out that they were not being briefed at quite the rates one would have thought, given the numbers, far from it. The Bar Council, to do it credit, uh, did not bury that report and so there was a lot to be done and we started meetings with all sorts of groups and uh, to address the various areas that were highlighted in the report where some action could be taken. Because in endeavouring to persuade people about the Hunter Report, I mean, there's no doubt that Rachel and Brian Shaw 
pulled it off ultimately, but there were various of us sent out to persuade individuals. And the, the most interesting thing about that process was that, you know, forget rational argument with most of them. You, if you're endeavouring to persuade male members of the Bar Council that they should support this, forget rational argument. You're never going to get anywhere with rational argument. You always had to appeal to their emotions. And, um, and I'll never forget being with Pamela Tate and she was persuading Neil Young, who's, you know, one of the finest barristers of his generation, and it was all pure intellect. It was all pure rationale, pure argument. This is why you've got to do it, Neil, and these are the reasons. And it was Pamela and Neil just brilliantly elucidating the arguments. Pamela and I go to go and see another member of the Bar Council, not as eminent, but, you know, a very well-known trial jury uh, advocate. And Pamela starts and I said, it's not going to work, Pamela. And we just then went straight into the emotional arguments and had him like that. And, and that's the interesting thing about those men. You know, I mean, really, these are such difficult arguments for them, save for the very best. The whole notion of, you know, women not being mothers and at home with their arms in the sink, you know, it was very difficult concepts for them early on. That report has now been used by um, the profession Australia-wide. and. Uh, the bar in Victoria has been commended for commissioning that report and seen very progressive and I think that the Bar Council now realises that it has benefited um, from its willingness to, to um, examine its own practices and, and, and be part of that report. But th there was a lot of unofficial opposition to it, just enormous amount. It was the end of civilisation, you know, they want special preference, this is a disaster, why are they doing this, there's nothing to complain about. There was huge opposition to it. But did the sky fall in? No, of course it didn't. <laughs>